Hey guys, this is Stephen Malin at stephenmalin.com. And today I wanted to show you behind the scenes of a movie trailer I recently composed for. And specifically, I want to highlight a feature instrument, and that is the Insolidus Choir from 8DO. There are certainly videos that you can check out by 8DO that go through every single patch and kind of explain um, how to best use that in, in your work. But my purpose today is to show how I used these patches, specific patches in this trailer, and how I was able to make them sound the best way possible in this context, and how you can do the same. So the first thing I want to let you guys know is the Insolidus Choir is now on sale with 8DO, and I'd like to thank them for being the sponsor of this video today. And the Insolidus Choir is what they're considering a world-class lyrical orchestral choir. And what makes this really special compared to some other choir patches is this one is really, really legato. So each of the patches is really beautiful and they are huge patches. As you can see here, 37,000 samples. So it's an 89 gigabyte original hard drive that's compressed down to 39.98 gigs. So it's they're huge files, uh, which means that they're very highly sampled. Um, we have a bunch of control with our microphones, um, a lot of sequencing uh, with your phrases, all the way down to uh, patches that are, they are pre-recorded in three, four time or four, four time at different dynamic levels with your uh, classic vowels. So your ahs, your os, es, and us. And then a, a really cool amount of sustains and tonal effects as well, which makes it very useful uh, for transitions and things of that nature. So you can certainly go to 8do.com, check out that and watch all these tutorials here of all the different sounds and all of that. One more thing I wanted to let you know about is 8do is doing a really cool project right now. It's called the Free ASMR Community Driven Sound Design Project. So if you're not familiar with ASMR, it stands for Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Basically, it's as they describe the feeling you get from a particular visual or aural stimuli. So there's a lot of um, a lot of different videos out there that deal with ASMR, which maybe like to help people go to sleep and to relax, that kind of stuff. Um, so essentially, ATO has this really cool project where it's a completely free, like it says, community driven. And so it's a project that uh, ADO is actually providing 50% of the samples in the library. And the community is supplying the rest. So this is something that all of you can be a part of as well. So I highly recommend you jump into this. All they're asking for is that you can submit your own files. You gotta have at least five or more of your own created audio files. That means you can go take your recorder, you can go uh, record your own sounds, maybe edit them, that kind of thing. Um, I think this is gonna be a really cool thing. Uh, but just a note, there is a deadline time-wise. Uh, it needs to be up by 9.30. So that's um, September 30th of this year, 2019. So jump on that. You have a couple weeks left as the time of this recording. So I just want to make you aware of those things. And I'm excited to jump into this track. Um, it's a ton of fun. I love epic music because it just it allows you to use your creativity to create your own sounds in the synthetic kind of world, but also to combine it with organic sounds. So whenever I'm looking for libraries, um, orchestral libraries, it's really important that they sound real and they sound authentic. So one of the elements that certainly does play a role is reverb. So I, I do want to show you some of the samples dry and then how I actually mix them into the orchestral palette so that it has this grandiose effect. Because a lot of times you hear samples kind of, they're already wet with reverb and then you don't really know exactly how you might use them in your work. Um, so the first thing I want to show is how I'm mixing everything. That way we're, we're both on the same page here. All right, so if I pop over here to my mixer within Cubase, you can see how I have a bunch of tracks here and multiple of them are sent to a reverb send. So all that means is I have a track down here. It's an aux track It's called the reverb track. Um, and within there, I basically just have a plugin called 2C Aether, which is my favorite reverb. And I have a musical hall 200% mix so it's all the way wet and then a 3.5 second delay on there. So if I were to take just a basic sound that we're going to explore here in a second, such as the Enceladus M. Mm. 
It already sounds really great. It's very legato. But within this, you know, epic orchestral context, that sound by itself may not work perfectly in the mix. So what I can do is pull open a an EQ, an equalizer, such as FabFilter Pro Q. And I like to just sweep off the high end a little bit. So that's kind of default. So somewhere in that 5K range, that's really the sweet spot that I found. And then to send about 2.89 above zero, send of the reverb makes a huge difference. It helps to connect a lot of that legato sound. So that's generally my starting point. So let's pop back over and let's explore the sounds that are possible within SolidUS, but then also the sounds that I chose to use and kind of how it all mixes together. So if I were to just open up a blank contact session, this is a contact instrument, and go over to my folder where I have in SolidUS, you can see how there are a lot of different options here. Uh, there's two folders that, that divide it all. We have single patches, which are just that. There are patches that have no association with time or your session, they're kind of standalone. And then the second folder is Time Machine 2, which is a contact plugin, essentially, and then all the patches that work within there. So Time Machine 2 is essentially taking the patch and it's stretching it along the tempo of your session. So if you're at an 80 beats per minute for a particular part of your DAW session, in my case, Cubase, what that means is syllables, like in this ARC 2 syllables patch, when the choir sings, they're going to sing two different words. And what's cool about the time machine is it's going to actually stretch each of the syllables to match the tempo that you're in. So if you're at 80 beats per minute, then a half note worth of 80, which is going to be two beats essentially, is going to hold the first syllable and then another half note will be the second. And it'll actually line up perfectly every single time with your metronome, with your click, which is really cool. And I have yet to see any other um, choir library do that. So that is probably like the biggest selling point here is that all of these patches are perfectly aligned to your tempo. So what that means is in my session, if I were to go and change my tempo from 140 to 120, all of my patches are going to match. So I would highly suggest once you start using this, that you jump directly into the time machine section. However, in the single patches, you'll notice that they're all the same. There's 13 patches in this one. But right here, they have the legato, which you don't get in the other, which is a big deal. So this legato patch, which will open up over here, it's a very large file, but it's it's very much worth it. I don't necessarily suggest um, loading four of these, but you could if you wanted to do four separate parts for soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. But essentially, we have our four different vowels, a, e, o, a, and with each of these, super legato and it sounds really great now of course that's with reverb on let's take it off this is out of the box now that's an even mixture of each of the vocal parts but what i really like is what they've done here is you have all of your different mics you can go through and you can change which mics are present, you know, close versus far, left versus right, that whole bit. But they also have, within the options tab, you can actually change the male to female ratio. So they have enough mics for the choir and they have them divided in such a way that they have all the males, so the tenor and bass, and then on the other side, they have the alto and sopranos. And so they have the male and female separated. So I could actually go in here and just have a male choir with the exact same patch. Isn't that cool? Let's check it out. Like maybe you need a really high male part, like for tenors. And maybe I want to sing the exact same thing without having to change my MIDI data. They're all female now, which would be the altos. So I think that's a really cool knob that I've also never seen in choir patches. 
and you can also mess around with like the legato volume and the speed at which things change. So now the uh, change between notes is, is a lot more, uh, it's a lot, it's a lot slower and a lot more organic. Um, like a real choir might be not so exact. So maybe somewhere in the middle is a good good fit, and then you can use the mod wheel to change the dynamics. So a lot of expression that you can do here. Now that is not one of the patches that I chose to use, but I do want to show you a couple of the others here that I think are really significant. Um, if I go back to kind of my menu here, I did want to walk through just a sec the different options we have. So let's go back to our time machine folder here and you can see how we essentially have uh, Latin syllables that are divided by two syllables, three syllables, or four syllables. And then down here we have multiple choices that we can choose between. They're all vowels and we can uh, choose between a 3-4 time signature or a 4-4 time signature. We have swells, crescendos, mod wheel based, but we also have short notes. And then my favorite to this library is the tonal to yell, which means that the choir is going to hold a pitch uh, and they're going to turn it into a yell, which is actually a really great sound effect to hold a pitch and then connect to transition into something different. So I did use some of that in this track. Um, so let's actually go uh, through those two patches. So the, the four syllable swell, very interesting here. We can basically choose any of these words. And I think my favorite part about this is that it is already attached to the tempo. So if I were to just solo this and then hit my metronome, turn it on. So we're at 140 BPM, quarter note click. like in that section my tempo just changed so here's at 80 or at 96 beats per minute 4-4 four, four. pretty cool um, and then likewise there's these three buttons down here where we can slash the tempo in half or we can double the tempo so you can make everything go twice as fast which may not always work perfectly because if you're at a very fast tempo all of a sudden. But the one I do recommend using more often would be the, the slash in half. So I, what I think is really interesting about these multiple syllables regardless of the patch you use whether it's you know articulation based or swell based whatever crescendo what's really neat is you can actually move the inner voices of any of these patches and it's still going to continue the words without uh, removing the previous words so if i just play two notes with my keyboard with this patch But let's say I do the exact same thing, but now let's add some moving parts in the middle. And it's still mapped to the tempo. I just think that's incredible. I can do it anywhere in the keyboard. I can get really complicated. has such potential and you can use this in so many different ways. So another patch might be just a straight four syllable time machine, which would be this patch here. So let's take a different set of words. And 
Again, this is a blank patch. This is without reverb or anything. So in this situation, same thing. If I were to split the tempo in half. So I think it's really interesting and has a lot of uses. So let's jump to the patches that I did use for this particular track. So within this patch, the sustains patch, we have three different words we can be singing. A, uh, A, uh, or M. Mm. So you could choose one of those patches, but what you'll notice is that once it's done, it's done and then the patch stops. So what we want to do is select the loop option and that way it will continue to cycle and you can play it forever. So that has a little bit of EQ on it and then a little bit of reverb and that's what helps it fit within this space. So here's what I did with the mm track very beginning of the trailer, just held this fifth, increase the modulation to make it a little bit louder as we go. Very spooky. Then another patch I used was a classic awe patch, which I think works really well in this big epic orchestral style, which is an awe loop patch, very similar to the other one. It sounds like this. Another fifth, it's a little bit more intense than the previous mm. And then later we have this really big uh, epic moment where it's all ahs, a little bit higher. <laughs> then we also have a little bit later, we have the Oz again. So something that you can do within contact, which is very useful. If there's ever a patch where the highest note or the lowest note is not exactly the note that you need. For example, this high E, which is high for sure, but I know for a fact that there's a lot of sopranos that can sing several notes higher than that. And in this case, I needed a few notes higher. So what I did is I opened up a new patch with the exact same aw loop. And then within contact, up here with the tune knob, I stretched it up three semitones higher. So now that highest note can be higher. And so within this context, I just played the chords I needed a few steps low. And then when you put it all together, it sounds like this. During one of these transition moments, I wanted to use the yells. I absolutely love this patch. It's essentially a vowel, a, o, e, or two different vowels, a, ne, o, fa, e, ma, and it goes from piano to fortissimo. It does it with a yell, so check out this patch. And you can really choose whatever notes you want. Um, I like to do it more like a cluster. Super useful with transitions. And here's that transition um, with the other instruments. Which works very well. And then for the last section here, I did another mm with the choir. Sounds like this. which may seem simple, but having a good mm, a good ah, a good o, oh, it's, it's essential for your orchestral palette, especially in this epic type of music. It's very, very useful. And so uh, that's kind of the gist of what I did with the choir. Just take a quick moment to discuss some of the other tracks here, and then I'll play it all together. Um, some other elements I started with, 
Um, I have a lot of sound designy hits. And so Ava, if you want to check out that company, they have a lot of really cool um, packs such as the Ava Instinct pack, which has a lot of sounds like this. Big thuds. Those kind of things. So I took those kinds of hits and then I made some synth arps. And in this case, I used Omnisphere. Just did some little repetitious moments. Made sure I did a lot of filter sweep. And in this case, it's literally just a, an EQ that I took and automated. You can listen to it and watch it as we go. Did some more of that later in the track. Which is really great for layering other things on top of. So if I take that and then I layered it with some short strings, which is another 8DO product called Adagi Edo, my favorite string patch for short strings. Absolutely love it. It's their spiccato patch with a little bit of far mic, a lot of close mic doubled those octaves. Gives a lot of power. And then later, I also added some from the same patch from the, the ATO Adagi Edo. We have some uh, tremolo strings that I use quite a bit to add some tension, just octaves. Did the same thing later with actual melody notes. <laughs> Then in other moments, um, such as this second section, I created things like a synth bass growl, which I used Omnisphere for as well. And in this case, the mod wheel adds that, that LFO, that wah, 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 which is really cool. creates a lot of tension throughout those sections. And then I even uh, took some strings, some colenio strings, which is playing with the wood of the bow. That's just a patch from uh, East West Quantum Leap. That's their symphonic orchestra. I just did some like Bartok pits. I made my own multi out of the colenio and, and slap strings, which works really well when you start layering it with stuff like synth arp and some drums. And then kind of the signature sound of this first section is using horns and trumpets um, later, but horns at the beginning with the uh, synth bass growl and actually taking my pitch wheel and bending it down. So taking this right here and as we do it. Big hits. Then a little bit later down the line, we have this big epic section. So I just doubled it with low brass, these big octaves, took the strings that were doing the short notes. Like that, we have the tremolo strings and just coupling all that with the big percussive hits. And then of course the choir comes in making it super epic, which is tremendous fun. <laughs> And then I end it all with this really funky chord at the end, which is very unsettling with the choir doing a different chord than the bass. And 
that is something that I will fade out in post after I export the track. But there we have it, guys. Uh, it's a really interesting track and, and full of moody moments with synths and percussion. And really, I feel like the choir, it adds a sense of humanity. And since this is a trailer about monsters and how humanity kind of responds to the, the monsters fighting, um, adding the choir even though i didn't add any lyrics per se with the latin um using the ahs and the ums and the yells it just kind of gives the struggle of humanity against it so that's what i felt was a great choice and a great use um and i really do thank uh, eight dio for coming out with really interesting um products and particularly with the unsolidus choir i've never seen a choir like that that it has those cool effects and has a lot of control over the mic placement over how legato you want something to be. So of course, with any sample library, I suggest you use a fair amount of EQ and reverb. And the final piece that I used here is called OTT, which stands for over the top. This is just something that I slapped onto the brass as a compressor, a multi-brand compressor. And then most notably on the master track, it does make a big difference um, to put this on at the very end and basically a depth of about 7%, maybe around 10%, and then a time for about 10 to 20 percent and basically i took the mid range and crushed it down a little bit so that's a multi-band downwards compressor and what it does is it kind of helps contain all of this crazy amount of frequency information and loudness into a small package that way when you play this in a big movie theater or you play this you know from an iphone speaker or whatever um it's gonna be able to fit in all of those contexts so there you go. Make sure you guys check out the Insolidus Choir by 8DO. And as mentioned before, the ASMR project, because that's something that I think all of you can benefit from being a part of, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. So without further ado, let's play the final track in its entirety. Hope you enjoy and you learn something from this process. See you guys next time.